In the 17th century, a group of native women called the Beatas lived together to dedicate themselves to the service of God. It was founded by a Chinese mestiza from Binondo, Ignacia del Espiritu Santo. The Beaterio became a center for spiritual enlightenment. Against the will of the King of Spain, the native Beatas bravely but quietly defied the civil authorities to attain freedom of religious expression and equality with the Spanish women. Wishing to prepare herself with a general confession, she went for this purpose to Father Pablo Clain at our college. In order for her to make a better discernment, he counseled her to withdraw to the house of the Madre de la Congregación. It was during this period that God inspired her to remain in the service of His Majesty. And even though she had parents who could decently support her way of life, she resolved to earn her livelihood by the sweat of her brow with a needle and pair of scissors that were the only things she brought from her home. The servant of God led her community in fidelity to the daily regimen of prayer, household chores, and apostolic ministry. In 1726, she presented a set of rules and constitutions to the Archdiocesan Office, begging for the ecclesiastical approval to encourage them in the way of life they had chosen. The diocesan official who reviewed the documents she presented had this to say, Digitus Dei est ic. This is the finger of God. These rules can only be attributed to the interior law of charity under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. The favor she sought was granted by an apostolic administrator in 1732. The heroic virtue of the servant of God was clearly reflected in the community she founded. The charism of service to His Majesty that was the grace of her vocation found various expressions in her lifetime. The education of little children in Christian virtues, basic literacy, and feminine skills. On the 10th day of September, Mother Ignacia, foundress of this institution, passed away. She was the truly valiant woman. At the root of her heroism were her personal virtues, the leadership she employed to pursue the service of her Lord, but above all, the deep humility that transcended the human inclination to dominate, when after she had set in place the affairs of her religious family, and had gained the recognition of church authorities, she spontaneously abdicated her position as superior of the community while remaining an exemplary member of the institution she had brought into being.